Hi all, Lee Veras here with another Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be bringing you another video exploring photo techniques, equipment, software, creativity, travel, and more. Today I'm going to look at the new lens blur panel in Lightroom. That's right, I'm finally getting around to doing that, that uh, lens blur thing. And we're going to find out if it's any good. And, well, let, let's just find out. We'll look at how it works, how to control it, when to use it, when it fails, and how to fix it when it fails. And, uh, okay, we're going to spend a little bit of time with this, so let's begin. All right, here we are in Lightroom, and uh, let's just get right into an image here. This, this one is, is like a, a really classic uh, application. Uh, if you go to the lens blur panel here, open it up, and you'll see it says early access. I guess that just means beta, but you know everybody has access to it, so I don't know. Uh, at any rate, uh, this is just a little hint that they intend this to get better as time goes on. So we'll take a look at that. Anyway, um, to make it work, you just click the little, check the little apply checkbox here. And now the AI goes to work. It analyzes the depth of the scene and creates a depth map uh, and applies this blur. So you can toggle the little eye in the, on the panel here. Just click on it to take it off and then let go to apply it again. You can kind of see it's doing a really nice job. This is a really easy subject to identify. And um, we can obviously we can change the blur amount. And uh, I'll get into the other controls like, you know, why would you want to, if you take the blur amount all the way down, that's like not doing any uh, blur. And let's say we wanted to eliminate the sexiest beach bar sign in there. So we add a little more blur until it's a lot, not quite legible. Okay, so we have a reason for doing this. Um, okay, this looks pretty good. And uh, one thing uh, that to pay attention to is if you just check visualize depth map, you can see what the AI has done. Uh, it's identified, this is a really easy scene to analyze because uh, the depth cues are in the lighting and in the amount of blur that's already in the lens. So it's identifying this background as being much further away. The hand here is the closest. And you can see in this area down here, there's sort of a, almost a histogram. These are like all the pixels and their distance from the lens. So the lighter the color is the closer to the lens it is and and it's sort of identified pretty correctly uh, the elements here that are closer to the lens and as it goes back it turns sort of pink and finally ends up in this dark kind of purple and you kind of see the dark purple over here at the very end so that's at the back uh, so let's turn that visualize off uh, and one thing that that you can do is is place the the focus anywhere in this depth map that you want. Now, obviously, here we want the focus on the subject, but if you wanted, you could blur the foreground and try to focus the background just by moving this box around. All right, well, that's not useful for this image, so we'll leave it like that. But let's take a look at some other images. Uh, here's, a, here's, a, here's a good one that's also kind of easy to identify. So we go into the develop module. We're right here at the lens blur. Let's go ahead and apply. And it analyzes it and uh, there's our blur. Okay. Again, this is a pretty easy subject to, to identify and outline. We've got a little bit of movement blur in the, um, the sort of feathers on the headdress here. Um, but let's look at the visualized depth. And again, you can kind of see the bright yellow areas are closest to the camera. It moves through a kind of magenta and then the deep purple and the black is like the farthest back. That's all the way at the very end of the depth map. So we can, we can constrain how much of the subject is in focus just by pulling this in. And as I start to manipulate the size of this little box, you can see now it's pulling more focus off the background and we're keeping more of our focus on our subject. 
Okay, so then we uncheck that to actually see what's going on. And now you can kind of see it's, it's much blurrier there. I've also selected a different bokeh effect. The default here is this one, and you can kind of see the little circular um, lights that are being uh, rendered into these little discs. It's very typical kind of lens bokeh effect, but you can alter the bokeh. You can go for what they call a bubble bokeh, uh, which is a little bit more of kind of chromatic aberration applied um, in the lens. Here's an antique kind of bokeh where the lens is a, a sort of pentagon-shaped uh, iris. Um, there's another kind of donut-shaped bokeh, which is like mirror lenses. We'll do that. And here's another one. It's kind of more another kind of antique camera with some uh, vignetting in, in the lens aperture. Um, anyway, these forget about what, the, what these means as far as what lens was used. Just look at them and try and decide what you like the best. You know, do you like this kind? Do you like that kind? Do you like, you know, um, we'll, we'll stick with the default on this particular lens. And if, if I wanted to get these boats more in focus, I can extend the depth of focus and you can start to see they start to come back in. So you've, you've got some leeway in, into how uh, Lightroom is interpreting that AI depth map that's been applied here. And uh, so we can, we can exert some control over the image. Let's take a look at some other images here. Um, here's another kind of classic one. We'll go in there. Uh, it already has some limited depth of field, but if I wanted this to look more like it was taken with a telephoto lens from further away, and that background would go more out of focus. We'll apply the lens blur here. And now I think with these kind of lights, you can play around with the bokeh. You'll notice that I've got the boost turned up. What the boost does, and I've, I've heard this described all kinds of different ways, <laughs> but what it's actually doing is boosting the brightness of the bokeh. Um, if we don't have the boost on at all, it's basically blurred. The image is just rendered in a blurred way, but the highlights blur, the dark areas surrounding these highlights get blurred into the highlights. So it knocks the intensity down. And that's what this boost is used for. So we can boost that up to bring the brightness back up on those individual headlight, you know, light sources back there. Um, the blur amount, obviously we can make this more blur and you'll notice what it does to the bouquet. It just increases the size of it, which is, you know, pretty attractive here. Again, if, it, if the more you boost the blur amount, the more of the dark area gets blurred back into that highlight, and the more we may want to boost that to simulate that really out of focus lens effect. All right. Uh, so this one's pretty easy. Again, a very easy subject to identify what the depth map is. And it's done a pretty good job in isolating the subject. Uh, this kind of subject is ideal for this lens blur effect. All right, let's take a look at some more. Now here's one that um, we may want to get this background a little more out of focus, but he's really pretty close to it. And it's also going to be maybe a little harder to get a good mask, but let's, let's find out. So we'll go ahead and apply it. It builds the depth map and is applying some slight out of focus back there in the background. Okay, uh, this is pretty good. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Actually did a pretty good job on the mask there. Um, and we can increase the blur amount, change the bokeh effect. And, uh, you know, maybe we like this better. Maybe not. <laughs> I think we'll go back to the default bouquet here. Um, check the, vi the visualized depth. And here it's not, you know, we're, it's decided that this foreground area is closer, which makes sense, than the subject. But we're identifying the subject. So let's take a look at this. Um, there's a sort of identify subject uh, Little, uh, little icon here 
right? It looks like a person. So that's the default. It's identified the person as a subject and it's decided that they're in the middle of the depth range, okay? Um, so if we wanted to blur more of the foreground to get back to him, we can narrow the size of this focus box. And you can see now he's white. That's the in-focus area. And the more I constrain that, the more we're going to blur this foreground area. Okay, so let's, let's do that. And let's see if we can get just a little bit of a hint of, see the foreground is now blurring, right? So we're really kind of simulating a very, almost like an eight by 10 camera with very limited depth of field at wide open. Not entirely realistic. So be careful about this. This is, it may seem like a good idea, but it's not, it doesn't look right. So let's just sort of open this back up, get most of that foreground more in focus. And now we're back to kind of where we were before. You can also uh, dispense with the subject identification and select this little icon here to manually pick your point of focus. So if I wanted to focus on his eye, I could click right there and make that our focus point. And based on the depth map, it's now constrained this a little bit and placed it right where I want that focus. And again, these foreground areas are just starting to go out and it's perhaps a little forced here, but it doesn't look totally unnatural. All right, let's get into some more interesting things. Um, another kind of cool thing you can do with this, let's take a look at this image, um, is kind of simulate that, that little toy miniature uh, look where there's a sort of exaggerated, uh, limited depth of field that uh, makes it look kind of like you're looking at a miniature instead of an actual scene. So again, here, I've got a scene. This is an infrared. I always love to take infrared shots of uh, cemeteries. And we've got this nice cloudy sky back there. Let's see what the lens, um, uh, when this, I'm going to boost this all the way up here. So we're going to apply it the blur amount all the way up and we can kind of see that it's decided right through the middle here that's where it's going to be in focus it's a it's it's perhaps not not pushing these trees back far enough but we are getting that sense of uh, the sort of toy uh, scene miniature where we're making everything you know, exaggerating the depth of field here and it could be useful as an effect so we've we've uh, boosted the blur amount. We can play around with the bokeh again, just to give us even more exaggerated kind of bokeh. Um, and here's the cool thing. Let's visualize the depth. Okay, so right now it's identifying this middle area of magenta very, very narrowly as the focus point. Let's move this around. So it's, it's keeping those trees in focus, which we're gonna wanna have to repair but let's say we, we, we wanted just this area right here. Now we can see that white strip here uh, and we can move this white strip around and I'm gonna place it like right here and we'll uncheck to visualize. And so now this gravestone is, is the sharpest and we can see the grass is, and everything is sharp through this one plane. And now let's push those back uh, nicely. And I still feel like these trees are not blurry enough. So we have an ability to refine. You may see it like this when you first start using it. Um, in fact, all of these are closed up. You just want to make sure you locate those little reveal triangles to reveal the bokeh and the refine sliders. So here um, we can focus things or blur things. So my goal here is to blur these trees a little bit more. So I'm going to click on the blur button. And now I have a brush that I can brush into the image to blur areas that I don't feel got blurry enough. And it's applying the same kind of bokeh effect 
um, that is set up with the other sliders here. But I just want to make sure those trees are pushed way back. Okay, now there's a there's a separate amount slider. So if we want those more out of focus, we can do that, or we can just be very subtle about how much defocus we're applying, trying to make it match this tree back here, because that, that one was far away. And if you visualize the depth, let's visualize the depth again. Now you can kind of see that that has been pushed back and it matches the sort of purplish look of this part of the depth map. Again, remember, we're focusing in this area, right? So we're not focusing in the yellow, the brightest, the closest to the camera. We're focusing back into the scene. Okay. Let's take a look at some more examples. Um, here's one where we want to focus towards the back of the scene. Let's take a look at this. Here is, it's, there is some sense of depth, but it's 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 not as uh, as clear. Everything seems to be relatively sharp. If I want to apply a depth map, I'm just going to go ahead check that apply. We'll take a look here in a moment. We'll get our blur in place, and I think that's. You notice how it's it's identified this portion of the scene. Let's let's amp the blur amount just so I can see it. Just barely putting a little bit of blur in. Let's visualize the depth. Yeah, so you can kind of see that the size of the box is pulling in some of these more magenta hues, even though we're clearly trying to focus on him back here. Uh, and he's this purple uh, color in, in this little bar here. So let's let's constrain it. Let's pull that in make it closer to him, eliminate some of this foreground area. So I'm really trying to get back and now I'm, I'm pulling a little bit off his face. Let's move this a little bit like that. I'm going to make this as narrow as I can and still can and still sort of surround him. All right. So now now we're starting to see a little bit more blur here, but I'm still not getting enough. I'd, I'd like to just really kind of pull this blur in. So that again, suggests that I'm going to use the blur button here. And uh, I'm going to just kind of start blurring those areas that I think are just too sharp. And I want it to look like pretty much everything approaching him starts to fall out of focus. Now, I, I can't, this is too much, so I'm going to pull the amount back to get a sense of more gradual, it's more defocused on the outside and I'm just gradually getting sharper as I get close to him. And, you know, to finish this off, I might put a little vignette in here. So we'll go to the effects and put the little vignette just to kind of help pull your eye into the subject. Okay, so don't, don't necessarily limit your lens blur options to just those scenes where you can blur the background. In this case, we're actually blurring more of the, the objects that are closer to the camera. All right, now, now we're going to come into the stuff where it doesn't quite work that well. So here, here I have a portrait, and uh, this was done for our uh, Hollywood glamour lighting in the Harrell style workshop, and we have a great subject here, and it's that hard, dramatic lighting. Uh, and I want this to look like it was taken with an 8x10 view camera. So if we if we zoom in here, you can kind of see... This part is going, I'm shooting almost wide open with my uh, X-T5 here, and it's it's starting to go out of focus back there. But I, I want this to really go out of focus. I just want to be in focus on this eye. Okay, so let's see what our lens blur thing will do. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the lens blur. It's going to analyze the scene and build a depth map. And uh, it looks like it's uh, decided that we're going to be in focus in the 
on the nearest uh, subjects. Let's visualize that depth map and see what's going on. Yeah, no, so here's a weird little, you know, a weird little anomaly here. Somehow it's made a mistake and decided that this part is further back, which is makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, so we know we're going to want to repair that. Uh, and I want to pull the focus area off of these orange areas as much as possible. So let's move this in. And it's actually making that little <laughs> mole on his cheek worse. But I want to pull this, the, the focus off that hand and really kind of try to constrain it to the, what, what the AI has decided is the closest element. And I can just, I'm down to almost nothing here in terms of what's going to be sharp. Um, yeah, so we've really <laughs> modified this quite a bit. Let's go back, uncheck, visualize, and let's boost the amount. Yeah, it's kind of almost there. It's really struggling with that. That one part that should be sharp uh, and and the part that uh, I, I really kind of feel like the back of his head should be a little blurrier here. And maybe even this side of the beard is a little too sharp. So first, I want to fix that area that, that wasn't, I can kind of see it's sort of blurred out in here. So I'm going to instead check the focus and make sure that this area is focused. Right, and I'll just check that visualized depth map again. Yeah, so you see, I painted over that area. And now that has has come back into into more focus. But now I want to uh, I want to brush another brush, and I want to I want that to be a blur brush. So you can add multiple br brush strokes. Um, and what I'm going to do is add one that I can control separately, a blur. Let's uh, let's zoom back out here. I kind of want I want this area to be more blurry. Okay, just want to make sure all this stuff is more blurry. Okay, now. That blur level I like, but I want to have just a very subtle blur level coming into this beard on this side of the face. So I'm going to add yet another brush stroke. I'm in the blur again, and this one uh, will control separately. So I'm just going to blur that out. And that's like too much. So I'm going to take the amount down just a little bit more. So I'm trying to get a, 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 um, an increase of blurriness as it moves to the rear, because this side just didn't quite get that same look out of the depth map. So in essence, what we're doing is editing the depth map. Let's look at that again. So you can see I've brushed in this area and this area just a little bit uh, to kind of simulate that that uh, limited depth of field of an 8x10 camera. And now I'm, I'm kind of getting there. It's This it can never quite match exactly what an 8x10 would look like. But let's uh, let's go ahead and zoom in. Oop. Let's undo that. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Close. Uh, it's, this one's a this one's a, 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 a difficult a difficult one to manage, but it I I've simulated it's still I, to me it just doesn't look quite right. But in a pinch, I could um, maybe get this to work. All right, now let's look at a, kind of a more difficult one here, uh, and and. This is a decent picture from our Venice uh, uh, tour. 
we off, we we set up a situation like this where we get a costumer in a gondola and you get to you get to ride in the gondola with a costumer and take pictures and the other participants get a chance to take a picture of the gondola as it passes everybody gets a chance in the gondola with a costumer and uh, this shot's great I just want to I want to knock that background back a little bit more and so that suggests lens blur so let's go ahead and apply the lens blur and see what happens and okay the background looks pretty decent but there's weird mistakes you know so there's like this portion of this little pom-pom ball here is blurred and there's no reason it should be blurred so there's some kind of mistake in the depth map so let's take a look and you can kind of see yeah it missed the whole top half of this this little pom-pom ball thing here so we're gonna to have to fix that it's also sort of missed most of this feather in her hat and that should be sharp otherwise we've got a pretty decent um, depth map going on here I, I might prefer to get this area the arch to go more out of focus but uh, it, this obviously suggests that we're gonna to need to uh, use the focus and blur brushes to kind of uh, work on this image so let's see this is more difficult so let's zoom in and I want to bring this area back okay so this is where it gets tricky because it's really hard to mask off this feather and I think my strategy for the most part is just going to try and make it look like there's maybe a little motion blur like the wind is blowing that feather but let's take a look I'm going to click on the focus and uh, we're just start focusing stuff which I feel should be in focus which of course is her headdress here get as much of that in now part you can kind of see there's an archway back here that should be behind us but this is a little bit too intricate for that mask so I'm trying to kind of bring what I think should be in focus and leave everything else alone it's a little tricky here because this is a very fine and you can kind of see, you know, it's going to bring areas of the background back in focus. So let's let's try um, altering the flow so it doesn't paint in the focus 100% with each stroke. I'm going to knock this way back so we can build up the focus slowly. And as I get out to the outside here, I, I want this stuff to look almost more like there's movement blur in it so I don't want to bring it back a hundred percent maybe I'll add a little more flow and make this go a little quicker so I'm trying to brush back in the depth map if we visualize the depth map again you can kind of see I am gradually bringing focus back into this area but because so much of the background is showing through those those feathers I don't want to overdo it I want to keep this looking sort of more like it's 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 blurring out with uh, motion you know like the the wind is maybe blowing that yeah uh, it's a little tricky maybe bring in a little more down here Can bring in a little bit of focus over the areas where there's a plain background it doesn't look as obvious but you can kind of see it gets to be really tricky and not as uh, effective to just brush in these brush strokes here let's go back down I'm gonna zoom out and then I'm gonna zoom back in on this Oop. boy that just always does this to me let me bring this flow back up and since it's plain behind there I'm not that worried about bringing this back into focus because you can't tell so much that the background's not as in focus this area too want to bring that in make sure this is in focus it seems like it's gone a little bit out around the edges there okay all right so uh you know i'm i'm kind of okay we'll check the depth map again yeah okay 
pretty cool. Now I want to I want to blur this stuff out, so I'll just add another brush stroke with the blur. And let's let's blur this. I just want that stuff to look less blurry. I mean, less less focused. Bring up my amount. You can bring that. You can change the amount after the brush stroke. So something like that. I'll make sure that's out of focus up there too. Not that this makes any sense, but just visually, I just want everything to be out of focus except my subject. And there's one other thing at this area, the subject doesn't seem quite as um, in focus as I'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mask uh, and we'll mask the subject. OK, so I can see my overlay is showing that part of the subject is in focus. Now what I want to do is intersect this mask with a radial gradient. So I'm going to constrain the radial gradient by the mask of the subject. And I want to kind of put it uh, over her face here. Just this, this, just this area here. I want to make sure that that area, uh, kind of, I'm going to add brightness and, and maybe some clarity to to bring that area, uh, emphasize that area a little bit. Okay, so um, let's amp up the whites just a little bit. Put a little more contrast in that area. Maybe a little extra clarity. And for extra focus, we'll use the texture. OK, so again, the problem here, I think, is when you have really difficult items to mask out. Um, but with a little extra patience, a little, a little work, we can get something serviceable. Um, OK, well, I think that that pretty much covers the use of this lens blur tool. Um, and again, remember, you can always toggle it on and off and just see where you've come by clicking on this little eye. We'll hold it down, and now we can see the original. Toggle it off, and we can see the effect of the lens blur in the background. Okay, well that's it for now. I hope this tutorial has given you some ideas about how you can use lens blur with your own images. So while it's not perfect, this lens blur feature will only get better with time. So hang in there as the AI depth map creation improves, we'll see even more realistic lens blurs moving forward. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.